So let's speak now to uh, Professor Carol Sikora. Carol, great to see you this morning. This is devastating, isn't it, for everybody, whether you have cancer in your life at the moment or not? It is. It's a very common disease. One in two of us are going to get it, Bev. And uh, you shouldn't have to wait more than a month before you get diagnosed and start start treatment. And you know, even before COVID, we we're falling way behind European norms, and now we're far, far behind. And I know this is politics, the Labour Party are using it uh, against the Conservative Party, and that's the problem in this country. The health service is used as a, a political football ground. Instead of both parties sitting together and coming up with a strategy for the new NHS, for a new way of delivering health care, it just can't go on the way it's going. I know that you, a bit like me during the pandemic, were deeply frustrated and tried where possible to speak out about the fact that the NHS has suddenly become a nothing but COVID service. We put everything on hold. Just reflect a little bit on your frustrations of that time and where we're at now. I think during the time it was clear that no one knew how serious COVID was going to be and how quickly we were going to come out of it. But everybody else suffered. People with heart attacks didn't get admitted to hospital. People with cancer diagnosis. Chemotherapy was stopped in young women with breast cancer instantly with no explanation because of the problem. And I think it was an overreaction. We could have coped with COVID and still run the normal cancer services, normal heart services. And that just didn't happen. As we've come out of it, it's just not gone quickly enough. We've not sort of, there's been other problems, the industrial action by different professional groups in the health service, the very fact that the health service is so bureaucratic and so behind in, in being a consumer organization. I mean, there's no other consumer organization I know that you'd have to phone up, wait on the phone for an hour and be told you can't have an appointment to see someone. And this is just unbelievable. Or to wait 12 hours in an emergency room uh, to have to get stitched. I mean, there's no other organization organization that I know of would make you wait. Not even a budget airline would treat you that badly. So I think <laughs> the important is, is getting it much more consumer focused and getting things moving again. Carol, if um, the Labour Party were here, they would say this is all about money. The mean spirited Tory government's not spending enough money. If the Tory party would say, they'll say we're spending records amount of money. You said, you said even before COVID, we were slipping back with cancer. Why is it such a problem. Is it money or is it something else? It's the organisation of diagnostic services. So if you have cancer, there's no point phoning 111, NHS 111, the online service. You have to see your GP who has to make a referral. Now, in the year 2000, that's 23 years ago, we came up with a two week wait. And the plan was that if your GP thought you had cancer, you had to be seen within two weeks. And it sort of worked, but it was only meant to be short term till we could build the diagnostic capacity. And that just hasn't happened. So although the two-week wait is still there. The targets are being breached all the time. The other target, two months to start treatment from diagnosis, that's being breached in many trusts around the country. Uh, and it's as though we've become a third world service. If you go to France, you go to Germany, it's totally different. Everybody with symptoms that could be cancer gets sorted out within two weeks, your scans, your biopsies and so on. It just doesn't happen here. It's too slow. You know what the problem is. You'll have talked to people in the health service about it. Ministers must know what the problem is. Why doesn't it get fixed, Carol? I think the problem is when you go to NHS England, which is like the control room of the NHS in Elephant and Castle in South London, and it's like a signal box where they've got lots of signals, lots of levers, but they're not connected anywhere. So the hospitals, the trusts around the country have their own management structure and nothing seems to get through. So all you get from the centre are platitudes, we're spending another billion pounds on diagnostic equipment and so on, but actually the levers have been pulled but the, the cables have gone missing and someone's eaten the cables and that's the problem. We had a cancer survivor on earlier that we spoke to about her successful journey actually of getting over cancer and I said to her now with these wait times don't we have a two-tier system whereby if you have a family member who has cancer you will sell anything to get the treatment you're not going to sit there and wait for six to twelve months for treatment or diagnosis which means inevitably we have a two-tier system. If you do have what you think is cancer or is confirmed to be cancer right now, do you get better 
care privately? Or is the NHS still your best option? You know, the, the thing to do is to use private care where you can unblock a, a delay. And the biggest delay is not in treatment, it's actually in the diagnosis. So a delay in getting a scan. If you're told, come back in six months for a scan, that's not good enough. You can get one, there are sites which like, uh, you know, you, you compare pricing, go compare type sites for scans. You can book one for 300 quid. Now, I'm not recommending that, but there's no doubt, identify where the block is, what's holding things up and try and unblock it. Be persuasive. Don't get aggressive. Don't shout at anybody, but just be persuasive. And I think that will unblock pathways and get you through. Brilliant. Okay, thank you, Carol. Dr. Carol, Sik uh, Professor yeah. Carol Sikora there.